So Lauren got through surgery alive. Surprise. Ugh, boring. So their whole thing this episode is Lauren had no clue that full body surgery would hurt so much. And Alexia had no clue that being Lauren's nurse would take so much work. Blah, blah. Something, something. They missed their kids and it's only been like two days. They unwrap Lauren from all her bandages to reveal that she no longer has a double chin. The, the second chin is gone. So here is her before and after and yes she did have a little tiny double chin it looks good it looks really good but is it worth the pain meh so this is the first episode i have watched their entire scene and it was actually funny just watching lauren stumble around like she is acting like she's 102 and has osteoporosis they must be hungry for the paycheck because she really earned my attention this episode so i was just starting to like her when then her and alexi so both of them are now on my shit list tried to steal darcy and Stacy's phrase snatched so I guess uh, the chin being gone is a sign of how snatched the rest of her is gonna be you can't just steal snatched from Darcy and Stacy like that and expect us all just to go along with the show like that is normal and then we go over to Nicole and Mahmood and yeah they are still psychos it's like hanging on by a thread kind of like and I don't I don't know how much more I can take really okay these crocodile tears rival jasmine's these are some of the best crocodile tears we've seen on 90 day fiance and when the producers ask her if she cheated or not I'm not cheating on Mahmoud I don't have the time to cheat on Mahmoud she looks down to the left and any crime show will tell you down to the left is the sign of a liar accusing me of cheating on him accusing me of all kinds of things more of his bull and I personally don't really think she's cheating. I don't know where she would find the time between terrorizing Mahmoud, buying donuts, and whatever else she does to actually have like a side piece. I'm what gets me worked up I'm not is just you in general. Heavy. Like work for the CIA or something, you're so crazy. <laughs> I don't know how much more I can take really. So Nicole wants us to believe that she was totally shocked that keeping this Egyptian love slave on an air mattress in her living room and Mahmoud is still sleeping on the air mattress was a sign that their relationship was going in a good direction. So she was totally shocked when Mahmoud said he doesn't even like her anymore. I thought maybe there's still hope for us. He's a really, a really good person. Actually, he's got a big heart. Then why are you here? That you don't have any feelings. I'm like heartbroken, but this is it. You're so crazy. No. For anyone who cares, so the fight is about that Nicole stayed out till 2 a.m., didn't answer Mahmoud's call or text. Nicole says she was out with Olga and they were just getting drinks. Mahmoud jumped to worst case scenario and says that Nicole is cheating. Dumb and dumber decide not to meet in the middle. You don't have any fe feelings. Nicole won't let him look at her phone to prove she's not cheating. Mahmoud refuses reasonable explanation and he is holding his guns on worst case scenario that she is cheating. I will not stay in a loveless marriage. For I'm, real? I'm for real. So you would think these two bozos are like finally done, but we know that Mahmoud before this season started did get arrested for domestic abuse and it was against Nicole and I haven't seen anything about him going back to Egypt. So these two still might possibly be together. Neither of them post much on social media, which is weird to me because 90% of everyone on the show now comes here to get a social media following. I almost think these two are like TLC plants. This is total conspiracy theory, but why Nicole has no website or like any social media presence when she supposedly has her own business and resells vintage clothing? I just, I don't know any small business owner that would not want the eyes and exposure of TLC on their item. She seems like she could use the money she was real pissed off about the $300 Mahmoud spent for a hotel room when she chased him out of her house. I'm saying it's better we do first. I don't, I can't even, no, you're not, no, you want, you cannot stay here for a few days. So we leave off where we have been plenty of times before. Mahmoud is back on the run. This time he is going to his friend's house he met at the mosque. Nicole did ask him to leave and told him to never come back, but we all know he will be back. This is what I'm saying, it's better we do first. Okay, so to 
everyone's dismay and my delight, we've got Mima back on our screens. <laughs> So the rumor is this is her swan song. Supposedly, she's been fired from TLC. If all rumors are true, rightfully so, because basically she locked Mackle in a basement and then chased him all around Georgia and all the southern states looking for him when he finally escaped. And she lured a bunch of like crackhead 90 day bloggers into this mess. And then they were all like chasing Michael and they were on social media lives 24 hours a day around the clock. Like every time I opened a social media app, it was like popped up that she was live and sometimes it would force me into watching the lives and, she, and there she was ranting and raving it could be noon or 1 a.m she was always going and ever since it's confirmed in rumors that she's coming back on the show the ranting and raving stopped so there does seem to be some sort of agreement in place so we start off with angela over in nigeria mackle has his upcoming visa interview like the final interview to get his k1 visa and angela's all worked up and nervous which is how we like Angela because that means she's going to be unhinged and crazy but right now in the beginning of the episode she is holding it together. She is out to dinner with Mackle and she literally says she doesn't want alcohol in her drink. I had to rewind the episode three times to confirm she was saying she didn't want alcohol in her drink because we're so used to seeing her drunk and crazy and this is because that she wants to bring good juju to their visa interview so they have some other restrictions like they can't do the boom boom and something else and Mima is looking so saucy. I mean, she is barely wearing anything. She's got the girls fully hanging in the wind. She is a visual feast for the eyes. It's like you're looking at her brand new Beverly Hills boobies that possibly could be on some sort of milfy housewife. Then you go up to the head and you're like, ah, and then she's got like this fake ponytail on. She's got American flag, every type of outfit, American flag. She's got glitter on. She's got like her Monroe piercing with a rhinestone in it. It's just like a lot to digest. And she has like 75 pieces of gold jewelry on. And one of them, this sexy necklace is from our very own Etsy shop. So I haven't said much about this necklace being something I made except for on my Instagram page like once because I love reading the commentary on social media when she wears it on screen. So she had been wearing it on TikTok for maybe over a year but no one noticed it and then when she came on 90 Day The Last Resort everyone noticed it and it was hilarious reading the comments of what people thought about it so I didn't really want to spoil that. Because the truth is a lot more boring, but also just as funny. It's gone totally meta. I designed that necklace all the way back in 2020. It was inspired by Danielle and Mohammed and her wanting her sex tonight. And it was spelled in the funny meme way of her saying it with her sort of lisp. And I actually spent a lot of time and quite a bit of money designing and having them produced. And no one cared. No one liked them. I think I sold one from the time that I made them until she came on the last resort over a year ago. And then... I instantly sold out of them. I didn't have a lot. I think I'd start giving them away. And that's how I tracked it getting back to her. I had given one to Tana Leah, Nick Hogan's girlfriend, when she bought something else. And she had given it to Angela. And that's how it got from me to Angela. It was a game of freebie, no one wants it telephone. The original one I designed is meant to be costume jewelry. It's 18 karat gold plated and sells on my Etsy and website for $25. It's not a lifetime investment piece. And at some point like six to eight months ago, she went to one of those New York like baller type of jewelers and then had it remade larger in real gold. And then she tried to like market the real gold ones on her Instagram, but no one wants to pay like a thousand dollars for a sexy necklace. And people were like, aren't you mad that she's stole your design and no I think it's hilarious this necklace I made in 2020 that no one liked no one understood ended up on Mima on a show where she is wearing a quote based on another cast member and then it blows up online because everyone is so disturbed that Mima is wearing a necklace that implies she's sexy and we all know that Mima thrives on negative attention so I'm sure she saw all the comments online ripping her apart for this sexy necklace and that's pretty hilarious because I created the sexy KSI sexy Mima monster that is a huge part of her identity now and another reason I do have a soft spot in my heart for Mima is of all the cast members she's actually been pretty nice and gracious about my artwork not only does she get the joke value of it and she's in on the joke but she was one of the very few cast members to reach out to me because she wanted some of my items 
and she wanted to pay me for them full price. Well, most cast members are in on the joke in it. They find it funny. They know I'm not becoming a millionaire off them, except for <clears throat> Miss Debbie. Angela was one of the very few who wanted specific items from me and wanted to pay me full price. And when I said no, insisted on paying me. I mean, who would have guessed one of the most hated cast members of all times is a patron of the arts? And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Miss Debbie who fancies herself an artist and a champion of the arts, and she is one of the very few cast members that want me to take down my drawings of her. And you have people like Tim who was trying to trade like advertising on his Instagram, like he was trying to sell me one single Instagram post in exchange for like 10 mugs for his friends and family, which I most likely would have done just for the hilariousness of it. But he was so condescending when he asked. He acted like he had this high value ticket item and he was doing me a favor. So back to this episode, Mima has got her chill together. She is acting cool until she wants to review Mackle's visa documents for the interview. Mackle didn't want her to see them. I mean, he's got good intuition. Keep these away from the beast. Do not let her, you know, paw through these. She barges her way into this folder, and then she finds that he printed out some text messages of them as proof that they're in a relationship. But I guess this text exchange is of a fight, and it doesn't put her in a good light, so she flew off the rails, and terror has been unleashed. Oh. You know, I know when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And all I was trying to do, I swear, was help my husband. I was trying to be the wife. I'm just an idiot. Surprisingly, Jasmine and Gino are super boring this episode and slightly rational. They're still fighting over her not wanting to have kids right now. They... I'm pretty disappointed. You know, you're like making life decisions and stuff without involving me reach a temporary agreement and Jasmine apologizes to Gino and he accepts it. Yes, I accept your apology and thank you for that. Look at my Lopecia. They were the most rational couple of this episode. So over in Austin, Texas, Rob and Sophie start off the episode on a good note. Apparently therapy was good for them. They're going to a sex shop to try out naughty outfits and then everything implodes and they are at war. The car ride sucks. They're fighting with each other. They fight when they get home and Sophie storms off. You like a little bit of, a little bit of this action? <laughs> a little bit of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Things are pretty sad, actually, in Arkansas because Liz tells Riley she's never coming back to Arkansas and Big Ed is no longer her thumb-shaped dad anymore. Big Ed is a douche canoe in every way you would expect. The trash goes out on Mondays, so put it out Sunday night. Okay. Something that I now got to think about. Um, do I hire a cleaning lady or do I start, you know, cleaning the house myself? Then Big Ed wonders who will do the cleaning now that Liz is gone. Everybody gets to finally say it again to my face, I told you so. We both dodged a bullet. Then we move over to Kobe and Emily and they are at Kobe's family's house to negotiate the bride price. Things are going fine. Emily's jolly dad seems to be playing along quite well. And then all of a sudden, they start talking about Emily as property. And the pretty hippie mom of Emily's is like, my daughter's not property. And the dad actually backs up the mom this time. He's like, yeah, I don't think you should be calling our daughter property. She's only a property to our brother. If Emily today dies, no, so we'll be the one to bury her here in Cameroon because it's our wife. It's our property. Next week, I assume they're going to agree to disagree that if Emily is a farm animal or not. So come back next week for a brand new recap. In the meantime, make sure to follow, like, and subscribe.